Hello friends, this video on electric current and its effects part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Which determine the heat produced by the current. So how do we know how much heat will be produced by the current? Now the various factors which determine the amount of heat are material of the wire, length of the wire, thickness of the wire. So these are the three important factors. So when I say material of the wire, what do we mean? So let us look at the Joule's law of heating, a law which was given by the famous scientist Joule. He said that the heat produced by current is proportional to the square of the current, resistance of the wire and the time for which the current flows through the wire. So this is known as this relationship is known as the Joule's law of heating. So let us try to understand this relation in more detail. What is I? I is nothing but the current flowing through the wire. So if more current is flowing through the wire, more heat will be produced. What is R? R is resistance of the wire. That is of the conductor through which current is flowing. And what is T? It is the time for which current flows through the wire. Time of current flow. Right? Now, now we try to see how these are the factors which are involved in this relation. So when we say resistance of the wire, how do we determine the resistance of the wire? So resistance of a wire is directly proportional to the length of the wire and it is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area of the wire. So that is how it is dependent on length of the wire and thickness. What do we mean by thickness of a wire? So this is how a wire looks like. Right? It is like a very thin cylinder. So basically this area, so this area is known as the cross-sectional area and this is known as the length. So you see resistance is dependent on both length as well as cross-sectional area. So we can say that heat is dependent on length of the wire and thickness of the wire. And why on material of the wire? Because here resistance also depends on the resistivity of the wire. And resistivity for different wires are different. So it depends the wire that on what material the wire is made up of. So in case, uh, in this case, I am referring to wire so many times. Wire ca is ref can be referred to the heating element of any appliance. So that heating element could be a wire, that heating element could be something else as well. But the how much heat will be produced by a, a, a specific amount of current is determined by the properties of the heating element. So now let us look at some important applications of heating effects of current. So one such important and useful application is fuse. What is a fuse? Have you ever heard of fuse? So you would have seen that often people say that sometimes when there is a power cut, they say that you know uh, the fuse went off and that is why the power is gone. So what, do, what is that fuse? So fuse basically is uh, an element which prevents excessive flow of current through a circuit because if too much current flows through a circuit that can uh, destroy the circuit. So it is necessary to put a limitation to the amount of current that can flow through that circuit because excess current can also spoil the other elements of the circuit. Right. So this fuse is always connected in series with the device so that it can protect the device from unwanted extra amount of current. For example, think of your refrigerator. If too much of current starts flowing through your refrigerator, your refrigerator will, I mean, sometimes it will it, get destroyed, it will get spoiled. So we have to prevent that excess flow of current through the circuit of your refrigerator. So for that we use a fuse which is connected in series with the circuit of the refrigerator. Now different fuses have uh, different ratings like they can be 1 ampere, 2 ampere, 3 ampere, 5 ampere so that depends on where they are being used. So here you can see the picture of a fuse. Now how fuse works on the principle of heating effect of current. Now how it prevents excessive flow of current that is more important to know. Now what happens is 
this fuse is made up of a wire which has considerably a lower melting point so that when huge amount of current passes now as the amount of current increases what will happen as current would increase the amount of heat produced will also increased as per joule's law of heating now since the metal of which the fuse is made up of that has a considerably low melting point so as soon as the heat reaches a certain value it will melt so that means as soon as that wire melts what happens the circuit is broken now as soon as the circuit is broken there is no flow of current so it prevents any further flow of current so now when a switch is rated 1 ampere it allows up to 1 ampere of current to flow through it whenever the current is more than that it breaks due to overheating and that's how it prevents further flow of current through the circuit now another important application in fact these days mcbs are substitute to switches they are preferred over switches so what are mcbs you would have seen these kind of structures in your home also so mcbs are miniature circuit breakers why are they called circuit breakers because even they help to break the circuit in case of excess current so whenever there is excess current flow in low voltage circuits they will help to prevent the flow of current so what happens with these circuit breakers is that when overload condition or when excess of current flows or other faulty condition happens in the circuit, it automatically switches off the electrical circuit. So entire circuit gets switched off. Now, uh, how is it different from fuse is that in fuse you have a wire and the wire melts and breaks. But in this case, nothing like that happens. As soon as the current gets overloaded, it gets heated above us beyond a certain limit then the entire circuit is switched off so it is only about switching on and off so there is no breaking of wires or anything so that means it is more reliable than fuse in sensing the amount of current flow it can sense it in a better way so fuse might fail at certain situations but mcds never fail so that is why it is more commonly used than fuse one advantage is that here the, uh, we have auto turn off during faulty condition so in case you have ever observed this in your houses so this switch which you see it goes up and then again you can pull it down so that's how it can be switched on and off so that means it is very simple to handle but in case of fuse once the fuse wire is broken you cannot repair it yourself you would need to call an electrician and then he has to handle it with care so it is a complex process so this is easy to restore safe to handle so restoring it is like let's say it, it is switched off so how do you switch on just pull it down that's all you have to do safe to handle because you are not handling with uh, uh, there is no direct contact with wires etc so there are less there are no chances of electric shock so that means it is safer easy to identify the faulty zone now when the mcb trips under faulty condition it trips only at a particular position which helps to identify the faulty zone easily now mcbs are arranged like this so in whichever zone there is a problem only that zone would trip the others would remain still fine so that means it can be easily determined where the fault is so that means there are a couple of advantages associated with MCBs which make them more popular than Fuse. Thank you. Please visit www.examfuel.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.